find the mass of the solid bounded below by the circular cone z equals the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared and above by the hemisphere z equals the square root of the quantity five squared minus x squared minus y squared if the density is given by the density function rho of x comma y comma z. We can determine the mass of the solid using the triple integral shown here where r is the three dimensional region in which we want the mass. If we take a look at this in three dimensions, our goal is to find the mass of the solid below the hemisphere and above the cone, which is this solid here, as well as here. Because of the shape of the solid, we will use spherical coordinates to evaluate the triple integral. To help us set up the limits of integration though, we will also look at the yz trace. If we look at the yz plane, this is the yz trace. It may also be helpful to project the solid onto the xy plane. If we look down on the xy plane, we can see this would be a circle. So going back to our work, I've already provided the yz trace. But let's review how we would find the yz trace. To do this, we would set x equal to zero in the equation for the cone and the equation for the hemisphere. For the cone, if we set x equal to zero, we have z equals the square root of y squared, which gives us the equation z equals the absolute value of y, which gives us the v part of the yz trace. And then for the hemisphere, if we set x equal to zero, we have z equals the square root of 25 minus y squared, we square both sides of the equation, we have z squared equals 25 minus y squared. Add y squared to both sides, gives us y squared plus z squared equals 25. This would be a circle centered at the origin in the yz plane with a radius of five, but remember z is greater than or equal to zero, which gives us this half circle in red. Because we'll be using spherical coordinates to evaluate the triple integral, we need to remember that dv is equal to rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta, where rho is the distance between the point and the origin. Theta is the angle counterclockwise from the pole or positive x-axis in the xy plane, and phi is the angle between the positive z-axis and the point. Let's begin to set up the triple integral. The first thing we need to do is write the density function using spherical coordinates, where the density function is rho of x comma y comma z is equal to the square root of the quantity x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Remember, when using spherical coordinates, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to rho squared, and therefore we can substitute rho squared for x squared plus y squared plus z squared the density function is just equal to rho. So we have rho times, and again dv is equal to rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta. And now we're going to determining the limits of integration. We begin by determining the limits of integration for rho, which remember is the distance from the origin. So looking at the yz trace, rho is going to start at zero and then go out to the hemisphere with the radius of five and therefore the limits of integration for rho are from zero to five. Phi is the angle formed by the positive x-axis so this would be phi. So phi is going to start at zero which gives us the lower limit of integration. This angle would be the upper limit of integration for phi and we should recognize, because this has a slope of one, this has a slope of negative one, these two in line segments are perpendicular, and the z-axis bisects this angle, and therefore the upper limit of integration is going to be 45 degrees, or pi over four radians. We could also form a, we should also be able to recognize that if we form a right triangle on this graph, let's just say here, this is an isosceles right triangle, which should tell us this angle phi is 45 degrees or pi over four radians. 
And now for theta, remember this is the angle formed from the positive x-axis, looking at the graph in three dimensions. To form the solid, we need to go all the way around the x-y plane, and therefore the limits of integration for theta from zero all the way to two pi. Let's write the integrand function as rho cubed sine phi. And now let's begin evaluating this on the next slide. We first integrate with respect to rho, treating phi as a constant. The antiderivative is rho to the fourth divided by four times sine phi, or one fourth rho to the fourth sine phi. We first substitute phi for rho. Five to the fourth is equal to 625, which gives us 625 fourths sine phi minus when rho is zero, this is equal to zero. And now we integrate with respect to phi. The antiderivative of 625 divided by four sine phi with respect to phi is negative 625 fourths cosine phi. And now we find big F of B minus big F of A, which is negative 625 fourths times the quantity cosine pi over four minus cosine zero. Well, cosine pi over four is equal to square root two divided by two, cosine zero is equal to one. Distributing negative 625 fourths, we have negative 625 square root 2 eighths, and then minus negative 625 fourths times one, which becomes plus 625 fourths. And now we integrate with respect to theta. The antiderivative is this constant times theta. And now we find big F of B minus big F of A one last time, which is this constant, times two pi minus zero, which is just two pi. If we distribute two pi, we have negative 625 square root two fourths pi plus 625 divided by two pi. So this is the exact mass of the solid. But let's also show this by factoring out 625 pi. If we factor out 625 pi from the second fraction, we're left with one half, and then we'd have minus, if we factor out 625 here, we would have square root two divided by four. Both of these give us the exact value for the mass of the solid, which going back to the graph is this ice cream cone shape bounded by the hemisphere and the cone. I hope you found this helpful.